Not every day is Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Some days are Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, and some days in our lives are like Yerida Latuch Mitzrayim. No? Some days we're in Mitzrayim. Some days it's, some weeks are, are basically 210 years. <laughs> it's just me that's, that, that goes through these motions. <laughs> Now, sometimes I walk into, like, I see such optimistic, happy chavra smiling all day long. I'm thinking, what are, what's wrong with these guys? You know, but really, been, you know, like, ma'am, is So we, don't, we never know what's going on inside a person's mind, heart, and soul. You know, someone can be laughing, singing, dancing inside. They're going down into Mitzrayim, you know. It doesn't, for every person, it's different. But for us, the Rebbe is saying over here, very, very important, Bokeh Tovachim. Perfect timing, just started. But for us, it's very important to understand that even when you get patched, you know what a patch is, right, in Yiddish? No? Yeah. Sure. When you were younger, did you guys get hit or patched? Patched. Patched. Oh, I got hit. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. How do you say it in an, Af- an Afghan? <laughs> Bring the belt. That's what it says in Afghan. Mm-hmm. He's going to say, now look, look, look what we could do in moments that we feel the world is caving in on us, okay? Look what we could do with those moments. And I feel like the Rebbe is saying what we have a chiyuv to do in those moments, all right? Look what he says here. He's born in now. Bachur ve'avre chasid. Kama me'ushar ha'yita, lu b'yadcha haya le'achniya et luchacha, b'sha'a she'yitzrecha asher b'cha, matchil yishtagea ule'olem. He's saying, how happy would you be if you felt like you had a tactic to grab the Yetzir Hara just as it's start to, starting to mess with you and make you feel like you're a madman? How happy would you feel if you had that in your arsenal? <coughs> right? We'd be the happiest people in the world. Life hack. Yeah. We'd, we'd be the ha- if we really held on to them, if we really felt like we, we wouldn't get too nervous because we'd be like, oh, I see you coming on and by... Uh, Meet Kolachnikov, like meet, meet my, uh, my inner Kolachnikov, right, Sash? How do you guys, what do you guys call that growing up? Cereal? <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's like, like, if I felt like I had the weapons inside of me, I wouldn't get too freaked out when, like, Rip Shlomo called it, brother other side would come and start messing with my mind, right? Like, Tadam. It's funny because nowadays, if someone comes up to you with a baseball bat ready to beat you, you're not going to grab his hands and start a tons. No, <laughs> uh, not yet. <laughs> no, nachon. Ule ule garot becha is a tava she domenecha she kashai yotem yecholtecha leshavra. And the Yitzhak is coming to to pick a to start to arouse a tava that's that's you know or you feel that is impossible to break, right? That feels impossible. If you could have, if you knew how to overcome it at that moment with the tactics that we can give you, and your Yetzirah and your Taiva would lead potzitz, would mamish explode, what does he say? He said, you'd be a tzaddik. You'd be a tzaddik. Huh? Biduk. You know where you're at. You know what to do. It would be a war, yeah. though. Huh? We wouldn't have a war. Meaning it wouldn't even be a... Why? Because it would be potzitz. No, we didn't have to care of If it's going to be so easy, there won't be any... How does a tzaddik do it? So easy? The, this is a big machloket, Chabad, Breslov. Chabad, he doesn't do a war. It's not a war for him. And the way the Alter Rebbe explains a tzaddik, you're right. He says... Itapcha, he, he, he flipped it over. It's not even a milchama for him. In Braslev, the tzaddik is still in a constant battle all the time. So it's interesting. A different she taught. It's very interesting what you're saying. He said, but could you imagine if you knew that the, like, the moment the Yetzirah would start to creep up on you, you're like, <laughs> check this out. And you pull out a weapon, and right away it blows up because you could call it out because you knew. He said, Gam libcha kol atzmecha beyadecha hayu. Your heart, the all of you, is in your own hand. No, it's real. You have the Bechira. You have the Bechira. But you're choosing right away to fight it. And you're winning right away. So you still have to do something of Bechira. You can't just sit back and say, ha ha, this won't touch me. I'm, I'm shielded. Right? I'm, I'm in Mugan. Right? Sit back. Iron domes come in to protect me. And, and the Valkazah. 
you still have to do, you still have to shoot out the Iron Dome, right? But imagine you knew that you had the access to this all the time, right? Let's understand why don't you immediately attack it? Like, why don't you go for it? So what, what's the answer most of us have if I say to you, why don't we immediately attack the Yitzhahara when it comes on? If we know, huh? Either you didn't notice it coming on? Let, no, no, you noticed it. Okay, because it's, uh, it's reality. It's literally part of you. So what's the so what's yeah, the reason? What's the reason? Figure out how to like fight it. Right. We, we don't want to say that we're ready. Right. It's ready we inside. We want we no. want to partake. Right. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for the most honest answer. Why don't we do it? Because we don't want to. <laughs> because we don't want to. You know, the Torah doesn't talk about the man who brings in the captive woman. I I I, I don't know what's going on with him. They, they talk about the woman. Right. What happens with her? But they don't talk Wait, about the, the guy that brought her in. He's Wait, to, she has to do this. She has to yeah, do what's that. He, what's he going through? You know, this is what we're talking about. I, I get, I more or less, <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. This is very interesting. He says, "Hello, heveti lecha." He's, he's going to explain this. "Hello, heveti lecha divrei kvod kedushat Adoni Avi Mori zechatzal kolish livracha." I already brought you my great great grandfather's tire the Noam Elimelech. So how do you arouse within you the simple yira in your... What's that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Saba Raba, Raba, yeah. Shal kol panim yira mil fanav yidbarach yirat ha'onesh shelo yan sheol chas v'shalom. We have a way, and it's actually a very easy way, that a person can bring this upon them so that, God forbid, you don't get punished and you don't fall too low. Kechol ba'al chai she'arel enafsho. Like any animal that's scared to get killed, but it's all dependent on how much that thought actually penetrates the other areas of you. What tactic is he sp- speaking about? No, no, Yer Shemaim is the goal, but what's the what's the tachsis milchama? Imagining your more, imagining your death. Remember, you know, remember we, he's brought this up like. We've seen this about two or three times just in this sefer. The the the, the wacky one was the illustration of death that he the, the no not of death but of your um of your levaya of your funeral. Whoa, was that an intense one? The whole session. Do you remember that one in Bnei Machshav Tova? You were there. You weren't there. You were there. Sasha's at everything. The whole illustration of of imagining your own levaya, and. Realizing, and he says, what happens to us? Our neshamas can we could still hear. We're still our faculties of the goof are still a little bit intact with us at that moment. We could hear wailing and crying and screaming of the most beloved people that are beloved to us, mm. and there's nothing we could do about it. Scary, powerful imagery. Mm. So the, the Rebbe put us through a whole meditation of that, and then at the end of it, he said, "Now wake up." And there's something you could still do about it, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Unbelievable. He says that's if that can't the order the you know yiramach shabbat what can? Avalakol like he ends over here says avalakol talui be'erachit pashtut amachshava becha. It's all dependent on how much you allow things to widen and last in your mind and in your in your in your in your in your intellect. You know, if we're so and in our generation, it's very hard because of this, right? The flicking of the thumb. Next. The scrolling. Next. Next. So our, you know how much, think about this, from items that go into our mind, how much time do we spend on each item in a digital world? Very little. How many things actually like go inside our mind and we actually think about them more than just the, the three seconds I, re, I, I see a flash of a headline or I see, that's why I have, you know, I have such envy for, for, for people that, that don't have smartphones for many reasons, but one of the main ones is like, wow, this person is able to actually think more about the things that come into his mind without moving on to the next. 
He gives more thought to the things that happened to him in his life, you know? By training our minds to be short span. And we don't even realize it. We don't realize it. We don't realize it. Not be dumb. Think about it. A person that's in the world, he has to be in that world, right? So before he even says, Maida'ani, he first has to go through an Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook feeds. How many different items of information pass through that person's mind in, in a span of five minutes? Think. Hundreds, maybe thousands, right? You know, they don't pass through. I mean, they enter at some point. They stay there, too. I mean, Right, so enter. So I should say you're right. I yeah. shouldn't say pass through. It's, it's just enter. So here, he, and the Rebbe is talking about he's talking about little, letting things settle. Hmm. And it's, it's, it's so much harder today. Just to grab, you know. So if we want so badly to hold on to these tactics that he's talking about when it comes to not allowing, you know, tavot really overcome us, how are we going to do that when the way we normally and naturally think is so fast anyway, right? We don't let, we don't let, we could have, so let's say like this, what happens to us is, okay, I remember I have a good machshava of what? My death, meaning it's a good machshava in, in this context. One day I'm going to have to give din v'cheshbon, so I'm not going to be here forever. I have a good machshava, but how long would that last? If I'm, tra- how long, if I'm trained already subconsciously that our thoughts are mamish, not, I'm going to stop saying what I've been saying, passing through us, continuously entering into us, what, how much could I actually, how much luck could I actually have with the stuff that I actually want to think about last longer? That's why this avodah, is so much more integral, so much more important today, more than ever, so that when I really do need to have a strong thought, not only my zochet to have it, but that it lasts more than five seconds. That would be the greatest thing in the world. I want to think about Kedusha more than five seconds. First of all, no, Aleph, I want to think about holiness. Second of all, and I want to think about it more than five seconds, right? It's a whole new program. It's a whole new way of understanding, appreciating our mi- our minds and our thoughts, fast. Yeah. But we should be thankful, right? Should we? Be? For what? That Hashem created us, or whatever our situation trained us to be like that, so you can get a scoop from realizing that it's wrong and actually doing something about it, instead of us being For sure. and, okay, I'm enjoying, I'm sucking in all the Torah information. Excellent. Of course. Of course. This is like, you've got to fight. And... Nachon. That's what we're here. That's the avodah that we're doing. Hopefully, that's what we're doing. Hopefully, yeah. You, can, you come here to fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hashem sent us like the football players exactly when we needed them in our lives, right? To like remember what it's about. Nachon. Mechachameinu zal oru lanu emtsai od yoter kharif. And the Chazal said something even... Even more harif, and that's what he's bringing up over here. Yaskil yomamita. En zot yira shelo yanesh rak laskil lo adavar shekashem ikol onesh ba'olam aze. Vegam shum ish lo yinatzel mimenu. He's saying, listen. At the end of the day, no one, no human being, has ever uh, been saved from this <laughs> from this end of the story, right? It's like we're all sitting around here breathing and, and alive. Mm-hmm. And all of us are going to be Be'ezrat Hashem Be'seva Tova Right? Be'seva Tova Preparing mm-hmm. I don't even want to say the words, right? No, no, no man has ever figured out how to crack that code No AI Anything you You know <laughs> No AI Mishigad Nothing right? No artificial intelligence is going to crack that code so the Gemara says like this in Gemara Barachos, Le'olam yargiz adam yetze tov al yetze hara. Next page. Im nitzchom mota v'im lav yasok b'Torah. So always, what's always like this? Le'olam yargiz adam yetze tov al yetze hara. Like the Tanya tells us, it's in this world, it's always a battle. You always have to be margiz the yetze tov al yetze hara. You always have to make sure the yetze tov <coughs> is constantly flowing and pumping over the yetze hara. Always. And if you beat him, great. If not, run to the base medrash. Im lav yasok b'Torah. And if that doesn't work, the Gemara continues. Vim lav yikra kriyat shema. And if that doesn't work, vim lav yaskir lo yom mita. Ad kan lashon Gemara. It's a famous Gemara that we've seen a few times already. Shemashma. 
שאמצעי האחרון הזה של יזכיר לו יום המיטה הוא כבר אמצעי <coughs> הבטוח. So he says, look, the insurance, the guarantee from all these is on the deathbed visualization. Just go there. If the Gemara is saying, like, that's the end, like, that's the last tactic, just, just run to there. Don't, don't even bother, right? Do this and you'll be saved. But Kanal, if only in the thinking of a moment, you will not do it for you. Huh? Not what's that? It's not not a, what's, what's not enough? A moment. Exactly. But if it's just a moment of thought, right? But what's the issue? It's that if you just think about these things, like we're talking about these fleeing, these, these, these thoughts that are just, you know, <coughs> here, here in a second and gone the next second, that won't do anything for you either. נסה נא להרחיב אותה גם בשעה שאין יצרך מגלה בך. We always talk about this. Just like when we talk about strengthening אמונה. You know how you really strengthen אמונה? When you don't need to hold on to something. Preventative medicine. בדיוק. This is very important. The best way to work on things is not in states of emergency. That's the best thing. It's the most productive way, long-lasting, with the longest-term effects. Mamash kacha. And that's what the Rebbe is saying over here. Now, again, Nase na l'archiv ota, gam b'sha'a she'en yitzrecha megarem lecha. Try strengthening, try widening your thoughts, do the visualizations of whatever you need to. Also, at a moment that's like after shul, and you're not necessarily struggling with, with whatever it is you're struggling with. Widen it. Widen those holy thoughts until you start to lead Ragesh from it. I feel like he was doing that with us in the last parak. You know, we're, we're sitting here after shul, after a good gishmak davening, we're sitting down and we're talking about, we're sitting with the boys, it's all good. Today we have a Yishtikol L'chaim here. We're sitting, you know, your phones aren't necessarily really out yet. And uh, mine is out trying to capture the moment. So we're not, we're not struggling yet with you know, what we'd normally struggle with, right? And, and those are moments that it really is long-term effect. It works much longer. The as, because then what would happen? ומכל שכן, שגם אתה תתחיל לפשטע, אז בעזרת השם מצאת חז"ל תפעל לך, ורוחך עם יצרך ישברו, ועצמך וקדושתך יתחזקו ויקומו. What is the Rebbe telling us? When we do preventative medicine, like you just said, when you go directly to that spot, it's going to... בדיוק. Then, if I'm generally in a state of strengthening my mind with good thoughts, with, with strong things, and from a healthy place, And the moment that I need to run there and I bring those thoughts of Yom Amita, even if it comes in for a second, it does the job. Do, do we understand what he's saying over here? We have yeah. for you a tangible example of how to do that? Sure, sure. It's like basically saying like this. You know, we, we're, not, we're not yeshiva bachers, so we're not sitting in the base major. We're not, we're not, our minds aren't engrossed most of the day. with long, lofty, holy thoughts about Abaye and Rava, or even if you're just learning two hours, Musa and whatever it is, we're, we're, we're on the run. We're on the run, right? We're always on the run. So because you're always on the run, you're not generally in a state of, 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 right, of thoughts 
long of, of long holy thoughts, right? So, I mean, if, think about it right now. What time is it right now? 9.35. This is probably the longest span of good thoughts you'll have throughout the day. <laughs> Still, I, I hate to say it, right? It, it, Huh? If you're, focused. If you're e even if you're not focused, baklali <laughs> haanan shemalenu the avira, right? <laughs> I don't want the AD, ADD cover to feel like they have no chance of it. Right? <laughs> you know, I mean, the avira, the general avira from let's say, I don't know when you got the shul between eight and eight twenty, right? Eight around eight, eight ten, nine, whatever it is. No, okay, okay. Eight, 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 eight nine. nine. <laughs> Five. Five. Huh? See, he's making us look bad. Oh, he's Dumb making it. us It's making us look bad. He's, he's wiser than us. Yeah. Poke it in. No, no, no. Can't sleep. <laughs> sure. So this is the longest span of like a continuous good avira and hopefully consciousness of, of, of stream of good thoughts. If the avoda we do right now about strengthening our thoughts, right? Now, then in a state of like a, a, a pure flow, a good flow, then later in the day, when that thing starts to, whatever it is, starts to come and, 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 and mess with us, so I could bring, he says, then I can bring the thing like the visualization of the day of my death right into the moment, and it'll zap it much faster than if I don't have any stream of long consciousness. Oh, as long thing. as you having that thought. <laughs> well, this is the one, listen, this is the one, if you think about it, this is the one that probably works. Like yeah, the thoughts of like, do I want to do this or I don't want to do this? We generally want to do it. That's what we were saying before. Generally, we don't fight the Yitzhara because we just don't want to. So this is so far back that can be... This is, listen, I mean, look, look, let's, let's yeah. be tachlis. How many of you have like had these moments of I'm getting my life together when you came home from a funeral of someone that died young? Mm. You come back home, the epiphanies are starting... Life changes. It lasts for about twenty hours, and then you're you're back to everything. But I remember I had a, I had someone. I told you guys this. I had someone from 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 here come to my, come to the house a few years ago after the, the funeral of one of the chaver, and he, he I, I couldn't believe this. He said to me, "I need you to make me a, a shtikol shavua." And I said, "What?" He's like, "When I die, and the guy's not dying. Bez Hashem, he's not up there." He says, "When I die." Um, let you, you have to promise me that you let you say um, that there were there were some things I did because I really felt I, I really loved Am Yisrael. Now this guy is a giant. He'll have massive hispedim. I know for sure. Okay, but in his mind, he's, he he felt it just shook him up so much to the core that he wanted his children to have nachas from him. Mm. So he came the next day and he said, "I need you. You know, promise me." Kilo, he wasn't the guy's most un of yeah, what I'm saying I know it sounds weird he was saying it so that his children will have nachat from him so we, all of us go through that when we come back from those kind of things you know listen Leo, Leo D told a few Rabbanim in one of the Shiva calls that we're talking about um, Aliyah and they were talking about okay you know it's in the works in the, in the plans so Leo said listen I, I, I know what it's like to have plans Now, and he said, my feeling is, if you feel that something is right, that's the time to do it. So, again, the goal is not chas v'sholem to rely on statements that come out of shiva houses like that <coughs> to get our lives together. The goal is that in a healthy state of being, like, like, and that's the example, if you've had an hour and a half, two hours of a flow of kedusha, general kedusha, in your morning, Dafka then to right now work on visualiza, visual, visualizing an imagery of more and more kedusha, more and more holiness, a stream of consciousness of holy thoughts, so that what? When later in the day, because this is just the story of our lives, like the, like the Alter Rebbe says in the name of the Medrash, or the Zara Kaddish, it's like two wrestlers, they're in the wrestling ring, you know, they're always there. Then, then when, I do, when I need to access it, it's right there for me, and I'm so strong that I don't even. I, I bring that 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 thought in, and boom. If you're that if you're that strong, wouldn't one of the earlier ones work, like saying Kriyat Shema? Could be, 
Meaning, uh, he's not saying only bring that one. He just says that has, the, that has the guaranteed insurance. But you're right. If you're that strong, then even one inyan of Kabbalah Salmachus Shemaim, Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekin Hashem Echad, would be, or come to the base Midrash, open up a Rashi, open up a Ramban, on the, you know, it's, it's true, it would. Yeah. Yeah. The funeral is finality, right? You go there, yeah. a three-year-old, or whatever the... Whatever it is. Age, or even 99, right? Um, that's it. They're gone, and there's nothing. But the truth is, every second... Yeah. ...is uh, a funeral at that moment. It's not coming back, no matter what you... I mean, I'm not going to be 30, no matter what happens with the right. AI. That's why the, the, the um, Alter Rebbe said that one of the, one of the most dangerous things that a person can do is, is missing, for, he says, it sounds crazy, he says, missing the Zman of Kriyat Shema. Mm-hmm. Why? Because that Zman of that Kriyat Shema will never come back ever again in this world. Is That's why... Mi- compared to having a mamzer? Yeah. yeah. Then the Alter Rebbe continues and he says, and then like bringing a mamzer into the world is a mitziyut, it's a reality that can't be, that can't be changed. I just, I, I'm telling you a great, an amazing story. Um... A little while ago, I'm not going to mention the name of the, of the Gdolim because I wouldn't know. I don't know if they want to, if they would want to want me to say the names, but just because you said it, you know, these concepts of, of things in life of like we bring things into the world or we miss out on things in the world that we can't that'll never come back. So the Litvish, you know, the more misnagdish of Musardik uh, role of that is basically saying life stinks, meaning that. It's not exactly, it doesn't really give me it doesn't make me feel good about things because you know how many zmanim I've missed of, you know, of Kriya Shema, or whether it's like on planes for sure because I never figure it out and, and even if I do figure it out, I, I, there's no way I could fi- it's too much, whatever, right? With the, with the travel, right? So they're definitely doing traveling, you get some stuff or, or whatever, different zmanim of different mitzvahs or whatever. So it's interesting, we have, we're, we're actually in the zman of Tashlumim, you know what Tashlumim is? The korbanos, that if you weren't able to bring a korban, there's the shiva simei tashlumim, there's the days of, of, of the quota that would get uh, mushlam, they would, they would fill it in after the chag. The chassidish way of saying, like, of saying, like, to relate to the concept of missing out on azman, which means you missed out on time that'll never come back, and the way that you called it a funeral at the time, if it, births, if it gives birth for me to do tshuva, then instead of it being a funeral, it was actually a birth. A birth. It gave. It actually. Reb Shlomo once said this. An amazing Torah. He said, in the name of. You've heard of the Rabshitzer Rebbe, Reb Naftali Tzvi of Rabshitz. We've spoken about him. Right. The Zera Kodesh. He was the Talmud of. Uh, of, of the Chayz of Lublin. The Zera. You know. You know. The, the, you've heard of the Rabshitzer. I heard. <coughs> Reb Naftali. None of us. Have never met him before. <laughs> Reb Naftali Ohev. His name is. Aaron Yechaskel Ohev Yisrael Zera Kodesh. Six names, right? Zera Kodesh is after the Rupshitz, because Leah was crazy about the, the Rupshitz, right? So Zera Kodesh, Rupshitz. So there's a word that says that, you know, nothing in the world, it happens down here before it's announced in heaven. Nachon? En lecha kol esef milemata shelo gadel, at shomrim lo gadel. Anything that happens down here in this world, it only happens after they kind of set it in, in Shemaim. So the Rapshit says, so what do they announce when someone's about to do an Avera? Because if a person can only do an Avera unless they announce it <coughs> in Shemaim. And we know, you know, that from in Shemaim, they, they, don't say, they don't announce anything bad. So listen to this Chassid Shavot. The Rapshit says, before someone does an Avera, they say, look, someone's about to create a new path towards Tshuva that never happened before. Mm. And that has to be the way that we, that we relate to... Uh, you know, to these to give out her, you know? What a vort. But a person should never use that lechatchila before they're doing an aver. It's like, what are they saying in Shammai right now? You, know? <laughs> you, can't, you can't use that, like, consciously in this world of saying, I'm about to make a call in Shammai about a new yeshiva they're about to open up one day called Dar Chetshuva or whatever it is. You can't, you can't do it like that. So just to end off with this thing, just to show you how big the Torah is, tzaddikim that you know of, okay? One guy was about to get married, Recently, and he found out three days before his wedding that he's a mamza. Ooh. How crazy is that? Big rabbi. 
No, no, no. The, 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 it's gonna yeah. come. To, it's gonna come now to the rabbeim. No, it's, it's uh, a bacher, a bacher. Can you imagine that? No. Now, what, what in the world should you do? Think about it. Think, think about all the, the different. Hassan found out. The chassan found out about himself Whoa. that he was he was a mamzer. I just I just heard about this. So think about all the different scenarios here. Like, do you pr- do you announce like w- what in the world do you, do you announce this? N- cancel the wedding. Do you cancel the wedding? Ooh, what a busha to the wife, Whoa. to the to the kala. She had, no, no, of course she had no idea, but the busha is if if you cancel this this wedding, what a busha to the kala's family and the chule. What a busha to this person, and especially what a busha to this mother if she's alive and did shuva. This is you know. Crazy. Now, again, I know there's no tshuva over the mamas, but I'm not talking about them. I'm saying... In, in, uh, we're living in 2023. The 60s happened. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 These shilas have come out for years already. But I've never heard of such a situation where a guy finds out a few days before he gets married that he's a... I, I, have, I don't know. I have no idea. But you could just imagine. Or the, or the father showed up out of nowhere, did a DNA... I don't know. I don't know the details. They went to one of the big dolim of today. Someone that most of you saw this past year. Someone with... You can't say the name of the dolim? Uh, maybe I could, I'd have to ask Rishut. It's just, uh, I'd, I'd have to ask Rishut. And he said, mm. um, you know what, the truth is I could say this because it was already said online. I actually, I realized to a much larger, ar- ar- larger audience. They came through the Usher Weiss. And, and although I'm, I'm sure you figured out that's what I was talking about already while I was saying it. They came to Rabbi Asher Weiss with this, with this Indian. And like, what do, you, what, do you, what do you do with this, right? So he, he, the, the way I, I understood it is that he, he did see a way to matter this, but he said that he needed another, he wanted another giant to be with him on such a, such a decisive uh, mm-hmm. factor. And the person that he went to said no. <laughs> said no, you can't marry him. No, meaning I can't join you oh, on the. I, I won't. I can't join can't because, because it's so. Listen, because it's such a. Con, it is so you're big. Like that also. Is this guy's the, kids the, the, it's, <laughs> it's not mamzerim. These these guys' kids are more. The, the status there between halal and mamzer is a little bit different. The status of a halal and a mamzer. What? Well, mamzer's kid is not a halal. What's that? Rafinstein did with the Russians. He said they didn't. They weren't married. They were really, it was like, uh, he saved Russian Jewry. Because everybody was uh, from such Jewry, a he, he saved, <laughs> I was going to say, he saved Jewry. So the, with Gradi Mamzerim, do you know what happened after the war? Do you know what happened after World War II? Do you know what happened after, uh, not, not only after World War II, Ravovadia, you know what happened with Ravovadia's psaks regarding Almanot uh, Tzahal after, what was it? Was it Milchemet Yom Kippurim? It was a famous, it was a famous it was thing. Lagunot. Yeah, Lagunot. What yeah, was it? Was, it? Yeah, I think it was, either, it was, it was I think it was 73. 73. Uh-huh. Also. These okay. stuff happens all the time. Mamzerus is a, it's much more chamber than Chalam. Oh, yeah. Mamzer's kid is uh, Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, no, oh, a, mamzer. a Mamzer's situation is much more serious than a Chalal. Chalal just means open, kiddo, like, open space. It's like, there's no... Chalal is from the corning that went right. on. Now, now we have a. Now I'm actually involved in a situation of a, also a crazy halachic situation of a coin that that I'm sorry we're going off target, but this is what happens when you, when you open these things up. So it's okay. Everyone's okay so far. Mm-hmm. A, a coin that got married to a conservative gioret. Mm. Okay, so think how crazy this 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 the situation. He has he has children. Okay. So, and he's mitchazek now, right? So, what, what's, the, what's the verdict? So, Aleph, he's not, we don't hold that he's, he's married. Yeah. Living inside, every moment. Sorry? He's married. He's not, no, he's, the, the Kiddushin wasn't, isn't oh, Tophis, right? The Kiddushin wasn't Tophis. Oh, Meaning, even if, the, even if the marriage was Kadas, the, the, the Chalos of Yid on the Nice. Kala wasn't, right? So it's, it's crazy. So what do you do in a situation like this? What do you think? What, what would you tell him? 
the 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 kohen. Just convert all of them, the ima and the kids. He's a kohen. No, the ima and the kids convert. Them. And, and then what? What do you mean? And then and, and the then marry and then marry her. Can't you see that? She's a convert. She's a giorit. Oh. <laughs> Meaning the kohanim can't marry giorit. So they're no. not allowed the kids, even if she marries them. The, the, right now the kids are not nishta yidin. They're not. They're not even yidin. So no, a, 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 a ger is not a chalal. A ger is a ger. You can't. You don't become a chalal when you meet gair. You understand? No, the corn has kids with the ger. Are the kids a chalal? I'm so, with a kosher ger. Yeah. This is not. 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 Din pilegish. It's. It's. I'm, I'm. Listen. I've been in this for a while already. It's so. It's so. The craziest thing is that he doesn't he doesn't want to give up his kahuna. I want to know what happened with the rituals. Oh, I don't know the end of that story. You can give up your kahuna? He doesn't want to. That's an option? To give up your kahuna? Do you, oh. you, it's, you it's, give back your library card? <laughs> oh, if he would give it up, then... No, I just don't know. There's a... It's, 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 it's a little bit of a... I know somebody who did that. He married a... He married a uh, oh, a he might not be a coin. Wow, so nobody's uh, right. We don't hold that people are... This is already a much... That's why they give the money back at a pigeon This is a much wider topic. This is a much, much wider topic. It's a very crazy... Reason. He's not religious yet, but he's getting stronger, and he doesn't know... And, and it's uh, been like this... This tension between the two, and I, and and it's like, you know, if Reb Moshe Feinstein was alive right now, I believe by Muna Shlema that he'd figure out a way to even fi- solve this one out, and I know for sure based on something that happened to Reb Shlomo that he would have figured out a way, mm. for sure. I told you this story, that Reb Shlomo knew someone in the '40s, in New York, that. Um, she was going out with a guy. She was from a very low class family, and he was from a much higher class family, and they were dating. And then the story Jewish. is he's Jew, Jew to Yidin. And then the story is is that um, uh, I think they were engaged, and he got her a little bit pregnant. That's how Reb Shlomo says. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a, right? a little bit pregnant. You're pregnant, you're not pregnant. So you said, uh, I said that exactly. <laughs> you know, <I'll> see. <laughs> you're <laughs> observing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sasha's <yeah>. back. Because <laughs> on Shabbos we said, yeah. right, you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. I'm a little bit pregnant, right? The, the story was she was a little bit pregnant. So, now what happens when someone gets pregnant? The Gemara says that a woman hates every man in the world. <laughs> the one day it's something in the mind, right? But this person said, oh my God, I can't marry this. Like, this is what a busha this is. I'm, I'm not marrying this woman. I'm done with her. And Bichla would have bushed to my family if they did this and checked out. I don't know what the story was. He's out of there. But they were planning to get married before. I, th- I believe so, but I think this was Meora or something really, right? So Reb Shlomo said, um, um, he knew this woman, and she also told him that she's going to kill him. She's going to kill herself. Because mm. this is just the lowest he's ever been in that she could ever imagine. She's going to kill herself. So, now... What's the problem? She, he, Reb Shlomo knew the only way that she wouldn't kill herself is if they, we'd actually find someone that would agree to marry her and, you know, make her feel like it's worth staying alive. A little pregnant with the one she was dating his child. Yeah. yeah. Now, what's the problem? Is that the Gemara says, Me'uberes chavero, that you cannot marry someone mm-hmm. that's pregnant with someone else's child. Mm-hmm. It's Asr Isr Gomer. Right? So you, do, do, do you hear the... Do you, <laughs> Let's wait. She's gonna kill herself. Yeah, no, after wait, we see it all the time. Yeah, we see it all the time. Dvarim shebacholim, saying bisman she miuberet chaveru at the time that she's pregnant. It's a whole sugya miuberet chaveru. So, um, Reb Shlomo knew this story. He went to Reb Moshe Feinstein, and he said he went. He called Reb Moshe Feinstein at eight p.m. and he told him the story. And then Reb, Shlomo's, Reb Moshe told Reb Shlomo, call me back at 8 in the morning. And uh, I'll see, I, 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 I'll get back, you know, I'll let you know in the morning. You think we have time till the morning? He said, yeah, till the morning. Fine. He calls him at 8 in the morning. And Reb Shlomo said, he, he, asked, he said, it was so besimcha. He said, you wouldn't believe it. I, I actually found a way to matir that if someone would want to marry her, that they can get married in the state that she's in right now. Mm-hmm. You have to understand. She she definitely 
Oh, what time is it? What time is it? There's a woman here in here now. Oh, by the way, we, we got in. He said, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it, that Reb Moshe Feinstein was up all night, all night, looking for a way to matir this, right? Talk about Yisrach, 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 Yisrach,